George, the story of George Washington Carver, written by Ava Moore, chapter 3, page 15. George had other things to do besides take care of plants. He held Uncle Moses and Jim plant he helped Uncle Moses and Jim plant corn. He fed the chickens and the horses. He helped Aunt Susan with the housework. The Carvers lived in a big one-room house on their farm. In one part of the house were two wide beds. George and his brother Jim slept together in one of them. In the other part of the house was a long, cross-legged table with four stools around it. Every evening, George set the table himself, putting down a pretty blue and pink flowered dish at each place. Top of page 16. The spinning wheel was near the fireplace in the house. George's mother, Mary, had once used it to do the spinning. Now it was Aunt Susan who worked it, spinning cotton into yarn. On days when George was not feeling well, he would stay inside with Aunt Susan and make things. He liked to work with his hands. He had a small knife, and he used it to whittle little shapes out of wood. He kept all of them in a box. He learned how to knit and crochet by watching Aunt Susan. I can do that he said to himself, and he made his own knitting needles from two turkey feathers. Sometimes George would sit by the fire and read the book Aunt Susan had given him. It was a spelling book, a little blue book with long lists of words in it. Aunt Susan told him that what most of the words were. There were a lot of words that George had never heard and he didn't know what they meant. George wanted to know. He wanted to know a lot of things. He wanted to go to school. But in Diamond Grove, Missouri, there was no school for George. Top of page 17. When George was eight years old and wanted to go to school, there was a law in Missouri that said white children and black children could not go to the same school, and the only school in Diamond Grove was for white children. The nearest school for black children was in the town of Neosho, eight miles away. George told Aunt Susan about his wish to go to school. What do you need to go to school for, she said. You know more than most of those school children already. George spent more and more time taking care of the plants. He had a secret garden in the woods where he grew plants and flowers. It was a kind of plant hospital. When George found a dying plant, he would pull it up gently by the roots and plant it in his secret garden. He talked to the plant and he patted dirt around its roots. There was so much George wanted to learn about plants, and about other things, too. One day, George went to see how Mrs. Byham's roses were growing. He walked through the top of page 18. He walked through the sunny garden, touching each soft rose. All at once, he found himself at the front door of Mrs. By, by Ham's house. George had never been inside of a house. It was one of the biggest houses in town. George had heard that Mrs. Byham had rugs on the floor, pictures on the wall, and books, a whole bookcase full. Without really thinking about what he was doing, George walked up to the door and pushed it open. He wanted to see those books. Inside the house was dim and quiet. George took a few steps. The rug under his feet felt as soft as a carpet of moss. Top of page 19. 
The first thing George saw were two big pictures hanging over the fireplace, pictures of a man and a woman. Both of them were dressed in fancy clothes with lace at the neck. George thought they were beautiful. He was looking so hard at the pictures he did not hear Mrs. Byham come in. Why, George, her voice made George jump. What are you doing in here? George pointed to the picture. What are those? he asked. They are paintings, of course, Mrs. Byham told him. How how do you do, do, do it? George wanted to know. Mrs. Byham liked to talk about her pictures. Well, first the artist makes his colors, and then he dips the brush in and he paints the shapes he wants. George began to understand. You mean says somebody made these with his hand? Mrs. Byham nodded yes. George forgot about asking to see her books. He wanted to get home and make a painting himself. As soon as he left the house, he picked a, top of page 20, bunch of red pokeberries that grew along the road. When he got home, George squeezed the fat pokeberries until he had a dish full of deep red berry juice. Now he had collar to paint with. But what could he paint on? In the barnyard, George found a flat rock. He dipped his finger into the juice and began to draw on the rock. He did not try to draw a man or a woman. He drew flowers. He drew until he had filled the rock with swirls of red flowers. From then on, George thought that next to taking care of flowers, the most wonderful thing in the world was to paint them.